Now, we could do the same thing in 3D, and it really wouldn't be all that much more complicated. It would just be a lot more variables. Uh, and we could get this result right here. Uh, and so we get that second order derivative in each term, right? Because we wanna know how much is the flux changing in each of those terms. Is more Q coming in here than over here? Is more Q coming in here than down here? Uh, and so forth. The Q dot term is a volumetric term. It only has to do with the volume, so we don't have to use uh, any multiple dimensions for that one. Now, dividing that through by density and specific heat, remember we want to have a temperature equation, so we want to move this all uh, to the other side of the equation, introduces an idea of thermal diffusivity. Uh, and we mentioned this in an early lecture, but here's where it sort of shows up uh, as at alpha here, um, and that alpha is equal to K over rho over C. So this tells us how fast thermal energy can move through a material, right? This one tells us how well a material absorbs that thermal energy, right? If we, if we have a big density or a big specific heat, it takes a lot of thermal energy to change our temperature. So this if it's big, is going to suggest temperature is going to change more slowly. This is going to suggest the temperature is going to change more quickly uh, if we have a significant um, difference in flux on the two sides of our cube. So this guy right here, this is kind of our final form of the heat equation. This is what we'll use uh, for the rest of the term when we want to pull out the heat equation. Uh, it is a second order partial differential equation, uh, partial because it's in X, Y, and T, second order because we've got these second order terms. Uh, and the solution takes the form of a time dependent temperature field. Uh, in other words, T at all of the possible positions at all of the position possible times, okay, from an initial condition to a final condition. All right, let's talk a little bit before we close here about what this means, uh, our, our beautiful little equation. The second derivative calculates the potential net flux into the volume um, because it expresses a change in slope of the temperature field. In other words, second derivatives express curvature, right? How much is this if this is our temperature from here to here, how much is this slope changing here? Why does the curvature of that line matter? Because the slope on each side tells us uh, how much um, flux is going out that side, right? So here we have a high dt dx. That would mean I'd be getting a lot of flux through here. Uh, and a low slope over here, so less flux headed out in that direction on the right side. So I've got a lot of flux coming in here, not much coming out there. My curvature is positive, right? So this would be a positive term, and that would tend to make my temperature go up if all of my other uh, terms are equal. So that second derivative tells us the curvature of the temperature field, uh, but more importantly, it tells us the change in slope, right? The change in flux from one side of the field or, or of the volume to another. And thermal diffusivity, as we talked about before, tells us, okay, if I have a big change in slope here, how much is that gonna change the, the actual temperature? If I've got a big K and I've got a difference in slope, there's gonna be a lot of movement of thermal energy, right? If I've got a small rho C, it's not gonna absorb that energy very well uh, and the temperature is gonna go up. So this is a material component that tells us, given the shape of the temperature field, uh, how much is it gonna actually move thermal energy and raise the temperature of a given um, point, okay? So we can write out you know, in a, a, a nice, easily defined way what that alpha means. K is the ability to move thermal energy Rho C is the ability to store thermal energy. This is big, temperature changes quickly, 
If this is big, temperature is going to change more slowly. And there it is. That's the heat equation.